Uh, this last session is entitled uh, Bridging Gaps in Open Infrastructure, Stories from Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And uh, without further, I want to welcome the first panelist, uh, which is Montserrat Garcia Guerrero. Uh, let me just read a quick bio to, to present her. Uh, Montserrat is a research professor in educational IT technology with expertise in open science and scientific production support. She manages the CACSCAN Institutional Repository and the Open Science Office at the National Autonomous University of Zacatecas with over 15 years of editorial coordination experience and participation in over 20 research projects. So, um, bienvenida Montserrat, muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Arturo. It is such a pleasure to be here with you today to share a little bit of our project. I'm gonna start sharing right now. Please let me know if you can see it. Yes. Perfect. So as Arturo said, we are here to share a little bit of our project that data sites are helping or supporting us with this. And our project is called Open Science Manual for the Latin American Region Experiences, Good, pra good Practices and Pending Paths. First, I wanna share with you why we had this idea about this project. It's because we have like a community of people working on open science projects or initiatives. And we had a hard time when we first start working on repositories and these kind of platforms. So we knew that we have to join the practices of the Global North. We, they, they have the handbooks and the ideas and the taxonomies about how we had to work and we have a little bit of difficulty in incorporating some elements, such as transformative agreements, payment of APCs, because our universities don't have a lot of money. I don't know if that's your case, but we are budget limited, so we needed to do something, and that something was sharing our experience. And when we thought about sharing, we have like a limited amount of people we could reach. So we were planning to open this way of working. So we needed to share our experience for other universities. We are doing that in Mexico because we saw that if we had these contextualized proposals, close experiences, it could help to optimize the learning curve. It happened a lot with universities here in Mexico, but we didn't know how to open that, how to share more experiences with more countries and more institutions. And when we saw the data site uh, convocatory, the, the launch of this proposal, the Global, Global Access Fund, we saw an opportunity to do this. And so we are working on a handbook that shares that is meant to share this contextualized proposal, these experiences of the Latin American region to be used as an example and as a guide that you can do a lot of things, even if you don't have enough money to pay all these things that all other countries are using right now. So we are now working and are almost on the final stage of the project. We first were working on proposals on working papers from a lot of countries. Now we have six countries that are sharing their experiences. And with these working papers, we made workshops with people that are experts and non-experts, like, like the potential users, institutions that doesn't have any kind of experience in open science projects or platforms. And, and we share all these working papers with them to have their feedback. In Zacatecas, where we are working now, we have like 20 institutions and only the Autonomous has these kind of projects like repository platforms for open science projects, everything like that. So we work with postgraduate school for teachers with, with a lot of Zacatecan institutions to prove the working papers, and we added their ideas on our handbook. Then we had a second workshop with a university in Bolivia. 
they do not have any norms, any rules about how to work on open science. So they're starting and they don't know how to approach. Okay. She's telling me that the presentation is not working, right? We are seeing the, the first slide. Um, yeah, I, I have been. Let me stop for a little slide. while. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Sorry for okay. the inconvenience. I'm going to try to do it. Can you see the, the picture right now? Yes, now a couple of pictures. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. As I was saying, we already made two workshops in Zacatecas with seven institutions and then one in Bolivia with La Universidad Técnica de Oruro. So we have their feedback for our working papers. And now we're working on the final version of our documents to be integrated in the manual. Right now, we are here in Colombia, sharing all these final working papers with experts. We, we are at the Erika meeting and are the yeah. And now in half an hour, we're gonna share this proposal with them to see what they think about it. If they think we are missing something, there's something else we can include to send this manual, to send this handbook to the digital editorial, I'm sorry, to start with the process of publication. Here we can see some pictures of workshop. And we had the Zacatecan Council of Science and Technology working with us. They are, they are very interesting in supporting this project and do a lot of projects with the other institutions that don't have anything about open science. Here is the, the meeting with one of the meetings we had with the university in Bolivia. Here is one meeting with some of universities in Colombia. And right now, we think that we already have the feedback from key users, potential users. We have these meetings and we have all the documents in final version. Now we are attending this event, hopefully, so we can find something else to, to add and to share with our authors. And finally, I want to share with you what we have today. As we, as I said before, we have collaborators from six Latin American countries, Mexico, Argentina, Colombia, Brazil, Uruguay, and Bolivia. We already have the two workshops and we have agreements to starting working with three institutions, two in Zacatecas and one in Bolivia. So we are now in the final document review for the book. We are hoping to launch and to share this book by December with all of you. And hopefully we can have like your opinions and your feedback. And maybe we can add in the second version in a second edition. That's gonna be it for me. Thank you very much for, for everything. I, and I hope to hear from you to have more feedback on our Handbook. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Monse. Uh, we are really eager to see uh, this handbook uh, in, in the next couple of months. I'm sure that there is going to be a lot of positive feedback from the community, and we invite you, all the uh, participants, to uh, check it out once it's published, and of course to uh, provide all, all the feedback, because uh, I'm sure we are going to have a lot of track on this on these results. So thank you so much for, for sharing. Um, also a reminder, if you have any questions, there is the Q&A box uh, below the Zoom bar. So please feel free to, at any point, uh, ask your questions in, in the, in the Q&A box, and we are going to read them at the end of the session uh, with the participants. So uh, now next, our next panelist is Paola Bongiovanni. Um, Paola Carolina Bongiovanni holds a PhD in documentation from the U Universidad Carlos III de Madrid. She coordinates the Open Access Management Unit at the National uh, University of Rosario in Argentina, overseeing academic repositories and journals. A researcher and professor, professor, she is specialized in scientific communication, open access, and open science. So without further, uh, welcome, bienvenida, Paula. Thank you so much. Um, 
And it's a real pleasure to be here with uh, Pedro Montserrat. And I'm very excited about your, your uh, presentation, Montserrat, and eager to see the, the manual. It's going to be very, very helpful for everyone in Latin America. So thank you for your work and your team, of course. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see the, the presentation? Yes, um, thank you. So uh, our project is an uh, outreach project uh, called Empowering Open Science with PIDs. Um, of course, we it's a team of people here, uh, Paulina, Dolores, Analia, Agustin. We are all working in this project. Um, so uh, as Montserrat said, it's very difficult for people to share their data. They have to understand the context. They have to understand why we do it. So our project is all about that. It's, it's trying to convey and, and convince people the importance of sharing their data in our community. And it's focused on enhancing the, the adoption of the infrastructure we have, our repository. Um, so a little bit of, of about our university that is one of the five uh, fifth most important universities in Argentina. Uh, we have very long, exper long experience in open science, but our repository is very recent. So um, it was implemented in 2022. Um, this is our Dataverse uh, repository site. Um, and within the info site, we have a, a different site that it has all the information, policies, guidelines, um, uh, good practices. We have a space for the project. So there you can see all the information that we are um, sharing about the, this project in particular. Um, as I said before, it is an outreach project. So we, we want to share um, with researchers and everyone uh, in different pieces and uh, forms, what we're doing and the existence of the repository, the value of research data. So uh, one of the things that we're, we've been working is uh, data stories. So we, the researchers introduce the research their data provide details about their uni unique features, potential for reuse, the, ve the value of the data. So the researchers are protagonists of this, um, these data stories. And also we assign persistent identifiers to the stories um, in order to prepare the researchers for these data stories, we, um, so they are aware of the opportunity that we, we provide with this project. Uh, we held information talks for them. And so this one, of, this here is about preparing a short video of research data dissemination material. This talk focused on the reasons for share, sharing research data to, uh, we had through videos, we had like one, more than 100 people registered. Um, not only from our, our university, but from other institutions in Argentina. Uh, the objective of this um, data story is produce a short video, like one minute or a little bit more, um, which introduce, they, they introduce themselves, highlight the most important data, the application. And if researchers are not comfortable with videos, we can have we can uh, interview them and um, have the, the data story in written form, allow them to be documented in another way. We already produced three videos, three videos with researchers. Uh, they need to have their data deposited. And it, that was very interesting for them. And a lot of people ask, well, how can I share my data? Because they want the, they want the video, you know? Um, so 
uh, we are now we assign and register the DOIs for these videos, and um, we have a good feedback from people. So we have a DOI for each data story, and uh, also in the data the data story we have the a DOI of the data, the related publication, and also in Dataverse, in our Dataverse and related publication, under related publication, we share not only um, the, the, the journals, the articles, but also the data story. And also, uh, the, because we add also ORCID, ORCID profile to the data, um, the in in the ORCID profile we we can have not only the the data but also the data stories here. Uh, is this is an example of a researcher that who share their various contribution. Um, so this interconnected network of PIDs guarantees the accessibility and proper attribution of works promoting visibility and scientific collaboration. Also, we have a very good um, experience with uh, one of our journals where we had the research data um, shared and because we, we implemented make data count, we can see not only the views, the um, downloads, citations, but all interconnected, interconnected with the statistics, uh, also in the journal article. And in this particular case, we saw that because the data was shared, the article had a lot of more, more views and downloads than the rest of the articles in the same journal. So that's very interesting, and we are exploring that too. Um, another element is that we are sending um communications about the project via news a newsletter is once a month new newsletter um so the researchers are aware of our project and the, the how we are going with the project we also organize uh workshops training sessions about uh, on research data management and publication this is an example from researchers at the Institute of Chemistry of Rosario in Conicet. Um, it is very important for us that to get the support of the uh, management in our organization. So we have our open access committee that is, um, the members are important secretariats from the university and they are aware and they are um, understand the importance of establishing a solid infrastructure aligned with international standards. So that's very interesting and important for us to um, let them know about the project, what we're doing and why the, the uh, PIDs and data site services are important for our repository and our researchers in general. We also participated in training webinars on data management and sharing for information professionals, uh, focusing on the not only theoretical and practical approach to reflect on the role of librarians and libraries uh, within universities of Reducar, which brings together national education universities uh, from eight countries, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Honduras, Mexico, um, Dominican Republic. In this case, we have 90 people connected and more than 450 views of the YouTube video. Uh, also created a social media holidays calendar uh, with relevant events and crafting related communication pieces to share uh, in social media. And a few days ago, we organized an event entitled Empowering Open Science at our university. It was streamed live on the official YouTube channel, in addition to Arturo, um, who participated and helped us uh, showing the importance of PIDs. Uh, we, we share our experience, our team share our experience, and several researchers also um, 
share their experience on on data on data management and publication. Uh, also, will be participated in uh, a conference. I hope you know the Redial 2024 conference. Um, there we will be presenting a poster and a data curation workshop targeting both information professionals and IT specialists working in Latin American repositories. Um, so for us, PIDs allow, allow the repository and, and our curator team to comply with fair data principles and, and make our data visible in on Google, Google Scholar, uh, Google data, site, data Set Search, that, that data site commons. And for our researchers, it's very important to showcase their entire body of work, not only the final results, but also the, the data. So ensure their work can be easily found and avoid bro broken links. The main benefit of PIDs is the increased discoverability, visibility, and access so the, the, the data is accessible, which uh, enhances the potential for citation, for views, for reuse, and opportunities for building their professional profiles. So uh, we hope that the project will have very promising results. And with that, thank you very much. This is our contacts, information, and social media. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Paola. Uh, I have to say that I have been following the data story since the launch of the project, and they have been amazing. It's really inspiring to see uh, how researchers are not only changing their, their mindsets to um, open their data, but also uh, finding really interesting tools uh, with the help, of course, of the, of the unit that you're you're directing. So thank you so much for sharing. We are, we are also eager to see uh, more stories about this. Um, and also for those who have uh, recently joined, uh, a reminder that you can um, share your questions in the Q&A box in the below bar of, of Zoom. We are going to be uh, really happy to share them with our panelists. And finally, uh, but not least, <laughs> uh, Pedro Luis Pisigati Correa is our next uh, panelist. Uh, Pedro is an associate professor at the Escola Politecnica of uh, the Universidad de, de Sao Paulo, excuse my, my poor Portuguese, mm -hmm. in the Department of Computer and Digital Systems. He holds a PhD in electrical engineering and, of course, has an extensive experience in information systems, biodiversity data portals, and open science initiatives. So, without further, uh, bienvenido, Pedro. Gracias. Gracias, Arturo. Thank you, everyone. This is a great opportunity to share uh, experience and to learn open science with all Latin America to, to cover the gap that we have in this area. Thank you for your present, previous presentation, Monseja and Paula. So uh, I will start my presentation right now. I will share my screen just a minute. Okay. Okay. Please, can, can you see my slide? Yes, thank you so much. Awesome. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you, DataSite. Thank you, GAF Fund, for support uh, this project. Uh, this is a very nice opportunity to uh, deploy uh, large data from Amazon. It is, uh, we are, in fact, this is an opportunity that we are developing a new uh, data portal here in Brazil related with a specific repository, a specific domain repository related with atmospheric data in Amazon. This is a very nice uh, pro this is a very nice opportunity because you are working with the eight different data co connected data from uh, the subject, the area, these areas, the area cover eight countries in South America. So this is, I think this is a very, very nice opportunity to develop this project. This project is uh, developed at the University of Sao Paulo, 
University of São Paulo, we are in the city of São Paulo city, but we are working with data in Amazon. And uh, we have two more institutions here in University of, uh, in here in Brazil involved in this project. Uh, one is INPI. INPI is like our NASA in Brazil. They are, uh, they support uh, environmental data. They support satellite data for all, all country here in Brazil. And another university here in Brazil is Unicamp that are, they are involved with a uh, project that collect data in Amazon in a long term. So we are responsible for uh, uh, publish this data that they are collecting. And uh, I would like to, to, to uh, emphasize here that, that this project, we are working with collaboration of Oak Ridge National Laboratory that has more 30 years of uh, experience to work with atmospheric data, to work with uh, uh, management, atmospheric data, curation, atmospheric data. So we are learning a lot with them. So this is a multidisciplinarity uh, project. This is a very uh, interesting data science, uh, open science project. Uh, involved the people from atmospheric data, involved people from meteorological area, involved people from IT. And uh, we have uh, six more students involved, PhD students, that, uh, and PhD and master students that are involved with curation of data and develop the our data portal here in Brazil. So one important uh, one important initiative that the GAF Fund project is supported here in Brazil is data curation. Because you are, we have this data available, but this data is not published yet. So this project is allowing us to uh, make the data curation and publish the data curation. So we have two main uh, programs here in Brazil that are collecting data in Amazon. And part of this data is not available yet in, the, in different portals in the world. So there is one first project is LBA, Large Scale Biosphere Atmosphere, that started 30 years ago and uh, involved the different countries in Amazon, and uh, they are collecting data from atmosphere in Amazon. And another uh, uh, important project that start two years ago is uh, the project Free Air CO2 Enrichment at the World Ecosystem Scale. The name is the acronym, uh, the acronym, acronym, acronym of this name, the project is Amazon FACE that started two years ago. So uh, when the first uh, the first the first project that uh, is collecting data for a long term is LBA. The LBA, the objective of LBA is to gener generate scientific uh, scientific uh, information scientific data to understand the function of Amazon better. Uh, they have. Uh, they are collecting data from different towers. They have 10 towers spread over all Amazon. And uh, most of this data is available on um, DAC in, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in US. Part of this data, one specific data, this tower here is very tall here. This, is, this, is, this tower is like the same, it's bigger than uh, Eiffel Tower, <laughs> so just for have an idea, in Amazon, and uh, they all for this this data that they are collecting here is available in uh, Max Planck in German, but we have other data, other campaigns that we have here in Brazil that not is not is not published yet. It's just an FTP site. It's imagining FTP site. This is not fair, <laughs> and uh, available. They are collecting data in different campaigns since 2016, and they have a, a bunch of data that you want to publish in this uh, in this project. So the challenge here is created a com hybrid computational infrastructure using cloud and local 
uh, computing services that you have at the University of São Paulo to remotely access, and the idea is access some data that available in uh, in German and the other data data that are available uh, that is available in uh, in the, in US and then you are aggregated in just one portal. So you have local data and data that are accessed in remotely in different portals. So you are created this, infra this infrastructure here in Brazil. Sorry. Um, the another initiative that you are talking is about the Amazon Face. Amazon Face, the objective of Amazon Face is to uh, comprehend the future of forest in light of climate change and uh, deforestation, degradation, and fires. So we must to understand how much the CO2, the, um, the Amazon forest will be sink or will deploy uh, in the atmosphere. This is the, the, the demand, demand uh, scientific problem that you have. Here in this project, you have like six plots like this. This is towers that they put CO2 in the, in the circle and uh, they are measuring how much CO2 they are uh, absorbing or they are deployed at the atmosphere. This is that we have, that we are, this infrastructure was built in 2022. They started to collect these in one plot in last year. So you have, uh, uh, you have one year of uh, data collected here last year. So in this project, uh, the challenge here uh, is to develop an infrastructure for soft uh, computer computational infrastructure for data acquisition, uh, manage the data quality and make the data publishing. This is what we have the publish the challenge for this initiative here. So the idea is to develop a computational infrastructure that uh, will manage the greenhouse gas of Amazon to involve a large amount of data required uh, appropriated tools for access, process, and analyze the data. Uh, the GAF data site project improved the, improved the data management tools that we need to uh, make data curation and uh, deploy this portal uh, and publish new data that we don't have published yet. So this portal deploy a uh, data discovery for uh, visualization. We have a platform for data processing, so you can make some processing part of this data. This platform can do this and make a unified platform that you can access all uh, atmospheric data that are collected in situ, you know, like in situ in Amazon. So this is the main function of this data platform. The data Amazon will deliver, uh, the first version will deliver a uh, platform and software tool to manage and publish data sets, collect uh, from uh, long-term initiatives like LBA and Amazon Face. This project will make the data curation uh, and the, of the legacy data sets that will have that these initiatives that collect and not in, in, in the, in not, it's not published yet. And then we are make some training, some researchers, uh, how they use in these tools uh, and how they can publish the data set in that Amazon, in data map Amazon. So just talk a little bit about this platform. So the, we have this data map, data map is, is a, is a domain specific uh, portal, that data portal, then we can visualize, visualizing, discovering, cataloging, and processing data sets and machine learning modules, enable sharing, searching, and reaching 
a visualization for bioclimate data in general. This is the general general uh, idea of data map. In data map, Amazon is focused just uh, atmospheric data from Amazon. Uh, here, the, uh, how you are working, uh, we have all data available in, in our data lake. We are working, during this project, we are working data creation, uh, collecting data about the uh, provenience, collect data about the data quality, collecting data about the instrument. And this is our metadata that you are put uh, all of this together. And uh, this data uh, curated, we are going to publish in the portal. What this is general the idea of the, 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 pro the process that data curation that you are you are doing. The concept that you work, we use in this project uh, is data sets. We are working with data sets. You are ca cataloging the, the data sets. Data sets is a collection of data files, and uh, we are using a data dictionary vocabulary based on schema.org. Now, right now, we have a first version, the alpha version, uh, available in this link, datamap.pcs.usp.br. This is the alpha version. And uh, we are going to release the first version in October 14, during the seven workshop on data science at the Escola Politecnica in University of Sao Paulo. We, this is workshop, we have two days workshop and uh, everyone is invited to be part of this workshop. Please feel free to, to uh, uh, subscribe in this, uh, in this event and you can follow us during the October 14th. In October 15, we'll, we'll we are going to have a training, hands-on training, and the, how to publish, how to, to make data curation, atmospheric data curation to publish in data map portal. So this is the general um, characteristic of this portal. For signing, you use your ORCID, and um, everything that you are producing is based on HPPP, H, a, a TTP client. So it means that uh, uh, you can, for example, you can access our data using Jupyter Notebook, for example, and uh, not just for uh, a, not just for a, a, a web page, for example. You can use other other services to use this to us to access the, the data of this port. Um, uh, this first version, you are going to make data management, uh, data set management, and you can search, you can see details, you can edit your your data set, and you can make a DOI attribution with this first version. Uh, you can download this, uh, the data set if you want. Uh, we are going to publish the data quality and make some calculation of this data quality uh, about the data set. And every user, we have profile of the every user and then we are going to track everyone that are access, assessing uh, and, the, and the exploring the data. So uh, it's just for finish our presentation here, uh, just a general recommendation for to support fair uh, Amazon data collect in situ in long term. One important recommendation, be transparent in your methods, platform and infrastructure for your users, for your supporters, for uh, the, uh, the institution that are developing this, this portal. This is very important. Implement a clear data policy and data management plan. It's important to have this data policy clear for everyone and transparent. Be prepared for the operation and evolution of technologies. It's important because we are considering to make this portal available for 30, 40 years. 
So for example, uh, uh, hard disk will be available for 20 years. So you must be considering very strong backup solutions for this and considering the technology evolution of technology. Uh, continuous understand the nature of your or business model and value chain. We are working with some institutions that are interacting of this data. And uh, we are have a, right now an institution that will support uh, this that portal, this institution will be created at, was created at the University of Sao Paulo. The institution will, they focus on just in Amazon. This is a center uh, of uh, center of stood in uh, sustainability of Amazon. This is the center created at the Amazon and this portal is, host, is hosted at this center. Engaging international collaboration in, re in research, software development, training, and people qualification. It's important to, to be involved with the RDA, data society, and this kind of community is very important for, for, uh, for this kind of solution. And uh, one important thing that people don't scale, system do. So uh, we need to make the qualification of people or students that people that are involved in this solution, they must be very uh, strong collaboration with the sta state of art of people that are working with this, uh, this solution. So one important thing, focus on, focus on data quality because you are working in a specific domain data portal and must, the data must be valued. So thank you very much. This is a great time to be with you guys. Thank you. Obrigado, Pedro. <clears throat> thank you so much for, for your presentation. Indeed, it's a really, really interesting project. I am sure that uh, many of us are going to be really excited to see uh, the repository and of course, all the outcomes of the project uh, once it's published and really, really, excited to to follow up on the news on on the project so thank thank you all to our three panelists we have a couple of questions and we invite the the participants if you have any question uh, you are invited to use the q a uh, button in the zoom bar just to track all the questions and so we can uh, follow up and share these questions with the with the panelists um if you like we can start I think the first question is for you, Pedro. Uh, Fernando asked uh, how an ex-researcher can use the open collected data and publications without paying fees. The our, our data portal is free. You don't have to pay for in in, in your case. Uh, but it's important that we have many projects that are supporting. Uh, so, uh, for example, the this project is supported by our uh, state agents here in FAPESP. FAPESP is supporting part of this project here in Brazil. So, for researchers that are interested to use, interested to processing this data, this is free to use right now. I think in the next four or five years, there's no fees involved. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope that we, uh, or Pedro, answered your question, Fernando. If not, or you want to be a little bit more clear or uh, quest, uh, throw a question in more depth, please feel free to, to use the, the the chat and the, the Q&A button. And the next question is, uh, what is the difference of DOAJ, uh, the Open Access Journals, and the Global Trusted? Do anyone wants to, to jump in? If not, uh, I'm more than happy to, to share some, some thoughts, uh, Fernando. Uh, the DOAGE is a little bit more centered around journals and articles in the open access space. While I understand that the Global Trusted is more focused on the certifying data repositories to ensure that they meet high standards and that this um, trustworthiness and data management. So they are similar in a way, but their aim or their focus is a little bit uh, 
one for the journal and the articles and the other one in terms of certification of data repositories. I hope that that answers you, your question. We have a couple of extra minutes. So uh, anyone, if you want to share or ask a question for our uh, our panelists, feel free to use um, feel free to use the the Q and A um, button. It has been re really really interesting to see all, all these projects. Uh, I also want to take uh, one one minute to remind the the audience that these three projects are part of the Global Access Fund, the round of 2024. Um, so we are very very excited. Uh, to, to showcase these projects um, from the Latin American region. If you are interested to see more about the Global Access uh, Fund, let me share with you the, the website because right now the calls for proposals for the 2025 uh, round is um, is open. Is uh, ready. We are ready to, to receive more uh, submissions for organizations in the GAF regions, which are Latin America, Africa, and the Middle East and Asia. So if you are representing an organization that are in, in the GAF regions, we are really, really uh, eager to see your projects. Uh, and as you can see, uh, very interesting outcomes can be um, so or can, can be identified uh, thanks to this, uh, this program. We are really, really excited to uh, showcase these examples of the Latin American region. And if you want to check also the, the, the rest of the projects, in the bottom of the link that I just uh, sent in the in the chat, you can follow up uh, and track all the the 2024 projects and all the uh, scope and all the uh, FAQs and the, all the information related to this um, second round of the gap, which is open until the 11th of October. So we have some time yet to receive more applications. We invite you to to take the time to to take a look on, on the on the call for proposals. And if you have any questions, of course, you can always um, you can always uh, come with us. Let me share just uh, them. This is like with our information. So if let me see if there is any additional question. I think we have um, we have all covered. So, um, well, thank you so much. Th thank you. Uh, we, we finished just uh, one minute ahead of time. Thank you so much again, uh, Monse, Paola, Pedro, for your time. It's re had been really, really exciting to have you on this session. Uh, to all the participants, just a reminder that you can follow up this session and all the community meeting sessions of today in the YouTube channel in a few uh, hours, in, in one or two days, it's going to be all... Um, online and of course you can follow up the slides in the Senado community so thank you so much for joining us today and um, we'll see you on the next time thank you so much <laughs>